In the past few minutes, I found myself flying through space completely lost. I don't even know where I am anymore. There's a bunch of stars around me and I seem to have lost the way around the universe. Now, there's something peculiar about these stars though. There's something unusual, something that I can't put my finger on. Let's actually try to approach one and see what one of these looks like. We're going to go to the object and... Wait a second, that is not a star at all. This is a galaxy. All of these little dots that you see in front of you, every single dot, every single particle is actually a galaxy that within itself contains more dots and more stars. And let's actually go inside one of these that has the name of RG06116789 and inside of it we'll find quite a lot of various things including a nebula that's right here a beautiful nebula that we're going to move away from and every single particle within this galaxy is obviously a star all right so that's quite interesting now why am i talking about all of this well because today we're going to be talking about some of the coolest galaxies that are known to us today and these galaxies are called quasars and blazars. Now there's actually a very slight difference between them and today I'm going to show you what quasars and blazars are all about and why they are considered to be some of the more interesting objects in the universe. So welcome to What The Math and let's learn a little bit more about space and universe today. <laughs> And welcome back. This is Universe Sandbox 2 or Universe Sandbox Squared and we're going to be using this game to try to, uh, well first of all explain what uh, quasars and blazers are, but also just talk about uh, their structure, their features and so on and so forth. Unfortunately neither Space Engine nor Universe Sandbox 2 actually have any quasars or blazers or any other AGNs or so-called active galactic nuclei uh, objects in their uh, repository. So here, even if I go through all of these, I will not find any quasars or blazers or anything like that. So I have to make one from scratch. And this is actually good for us because that way you'll get to visually see what they are and what, uh, how they basically are made. And I guess we should just start with the basic definition. So quasars and blazars and radio galaxies are all galaxies. They're not just stars, they're actually very, very large galaxies that have a massive, a super massive black hole right in the middle, right at their center. And this is what makes them different, actually, is that they're, um, they're called active galactic nuclei, because if you were to go really, really close to this black hole, what you would see is that this black hole is actually absorbing and eating up and basically destroying a lot of various uh, stars, a lot of various uh, matter, and it's just kind of taking it all in, and uh, it, a lot of it starts accreting around it and creates an accretion disk, and because of this accretion disk, uh, so much energy is produced that, uh, and also so much uh, electromagnetism is produced that a lot of the magnetic powers, a lot of the magnetic forces create these two sort of uh, rays going uh, sort of up and then down. And these rays are what uh, are what we're actually interested in. But to, to make those rays happen in this game, we're going to have to cheat a little bit and use pulsars. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this in a second. Well, let me just actually show you what I mean by this. So imagine, so this is a black hole right here. Now, earlier on in the creation of every galaxy, um, every galaxy goes through a stage when there's quite a lot of matter in the middle. A lot of the stars come really close to the central black hole. And as this black hole grows in size, a lot of this matter gets absorbed. It basically gets sucked into the black hole and uh, some of the leftovers start orbiting around creating an accretion disk. An accretion disk that sort of possibly looks something like this, except it's much more massive, much more energetic and much more uh, better looking as well. Something that we may have seen in the movie called Interstellar. Now, so this, this accretion disk is created by the, all of the matter that is sucked into this black hole. And um, as it sort of spins the matter, it accelerates it to the point where it produces so much energy that, uh, and so much electromagnetism that basically this is not only a very big magnet, but it's also a very, very highly energetic um, environment. And a lot of this energy starts being projected in two directions. It goes up 
and then it goes down so 90 degrees or perpendicular direction from the spin of the um, accretion disk unfortunately we're still not 100 sure why this happens and how it exactly works but we know that it happens because we can observe it uh in space and anyway so this is the black hole that we have with the accretion disk and what happens next is really interesting so let's just actually throw a few uh, stars into this just to give you an idea what's happening so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna place a bunch of stars around this black hole uh simulating uh, an environment where many of these stars didn't really get really lucky or even this big one uh didn't get very lucky and got basically uh sucked into this black hole so there's some of these stars that will be very very large and this will be quite interesting to observe. So basically, this is a simulation of what an active galactic nuclei looks like. And this was very common earlier um, in the universe when a lot of the early galaxies were basically uh, uh, saturated. And they not only saturated, but they basically had a lot and a lot, a lot of these... Um, early stars that basically didn't get lucky like i said and ended up inside the black hole so uh, we're going to continue the game we're going to unpause it and let's see what happens so as these stars approach the black hole they will most likely uh, or not most likely but very likely get sucked in and uh, get destroyed as well and as they get destroyed they release such an, a massive amount of energy um, that uh, these, unfortunately we can't really simulate this here, but we're going to do this in, a, in some other way, that um, these two streams going up and going down increase dramatically. And this is why quasars, blazers, and all other uh, active galactic nuclear objects um, have such a, a, a variable luminosity. In other words, they actually change the luminosity depending on how many stars are being absorbed by this particular black hole. And in reality, all of these active galactic nuclear objects work exactly the same way. There is a central black hole that is very, very massive, and it suddenly gets quite a lot of material get, that gets sucked into it and basically gets destroyed in the center. And uh, the energy that's created by all of this is then projected um, in two directions from the galaxy. So here comes the first explosion, and unfortunately it doesn't really do the whole jet thing that you would see in real life. Uh, it just kind of explodes as soon as it approaches the black hole, and there you go. They're, they start approaching the black hole, and no, where are you going? Come back. Oh, it's flew to, f f way past the black hole. It's probably going to collapse with... Antares, and there might be actually a supernova afterwards. But as you can see, they've absorbed quite a lot of the uh, particles that I had around. They were representing the accretion disk, which actually accelerated my game. So here comes the second explosion. And look at that, Raijo is coming back. It's coming back for another spin because the gravity of this black hole, uh, which is actually exactly the same black hole as in the center of our galaxy called Sagittarius A, is actually uh, making a return. But it's still missed. Wow. Okay, I think it's just too large. That's probably why. So as as these stars get absorbed, they release huge, massive amounts of energy, and all of this energy is released, and this makes uh, all of these objects called active galactic nuclei. Uh, all of these objects are the, the brightest objects in our universe, specifically objects called quasars and blazers, because uh, as I will explain to you in a second, they create something called a super luminous stream, also known as relativistic jet, which basically is a jet of energy and particles uh, that is so fast and so powerful that it basically emits a lot of various um, high energy particles and high energy radiation that we can then detect on Earth. Now, is this ever going to happen, Rigel? Are you ever going to go and get swollen by that black hole or what? It's just being difficult. I think it's too large. I think big stars have trouble getting swallowed by a small black hole in this game. And that's okay, I'll forgive them. Anyway, so basically this is kind of what happens. They get swallowed up and they uh, uh, emit a huge amount of radiation and energy. Now to try to simulate all of this and try to simulate uh, what an actual quasar looks like, we're going to use this um, galaxy simulation. This is actually the one that's called Supernova in the Galaxy. I just kind of removed the supernova and I removed the star. And we also are going to remove the central black hole. Uh, but before we do that, let's slow down time because if I remove the central black hole now, things will start flying away way too fast. And now right here next to the black hole, what we're going to do is we're going to place an orbiting white dwarf around it. I'm going to explain to you in a second why we're doing that. Uh, so let's place a white dwarf. 
And we're just going to pick this one right here, GJ1221. And it doesn't really matter where you place it, just place it somewhere. And so th this is just so we can actually create that something that looks a little bit more like um, a pulsar. So we're going to now remove the black, black hole, go into the uh, white dwarf and play, uh, make it total velocity zero because we don't want it to fly away from us. Now go to materials and we're going to use this new button called make pulsar. Ta-da! This should have made a pulsar. Did it make a pulsar or not? And here we go. I just made uh, one and named it Quasar. We can, you can obviously name it whatever you want. Now, this is our start of our manually made Quasar slash Blazer. Now, next step is what we're going to do is we're going to... So, uh, the reason why we're doing this is so that we can have these two jets coming uh, out of the black hole or pr pretend black hole in this case going up and down so this time what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and increase the magnetic field by like a factor of a million so let's just add a six zeros in here and this will hopefully give us enough magnetic no even more than that let's add a few more let's actually add maybe a few more zeros until this becomes a very prominent there we go very very prominent looking stream this is what i was looking for now as you can see there is actually two streams coming out of this uh, particular galaxy and this is essentially what a quasar would look like except maybe i think it would be maybe a little bit more straight than that so let's see if we can straighten this out a little bit Okay, I think this is straight enough, so let's just talk about what quasars and blazers are in terms of us seeing them. So, imagine a galaxy, and right at the center they ha you have this very, very active black hole that is absorbing a lot of matter, and a lot of this matter is propelled up and down in this way. Now, if you're looking at it from a distance, from sort of like this, this angle, you're observing something called a radio galaxy. Radio galaxy is essentially uh, a galaxy that is emitting a lot of radio waves, a lot of um, really interesting uh, spectrum of uh, low sort of radiation. And if from a distance, it would obviously look more like this. So it's not particularly bright, it's not particularly interesting, or I mean, it is interesting, but it's not uh, specifically that interesting compared to quasars and blazars. Now, some of these galaxies are under this angle to us. And they show us their face a little bit more. Now, this right here, anywhere sort of any sort of angle that is in this way is called a quasar. So quasars are a lot more bright, and they're a lot more uh, interesting in terms of spectrum that we receive. We get a lot of different uh, high and low uh, frequency radiation from them. We get a lot of uh, X-rays, we get a lot of gamma rays. We also get a lot of uh, really interesting effects that sometimes make it look like the light coming from them is actually traveling at faster than speed of light. And that's because they're so far away that they're creating this sort of effect called super luminous emission. Now, this is uh, what happens when you have um, something that comes out of uh, the black hole at almost the speed of light, but because you're observing it at a slight angle, it uh, and over time, over sort of years and, and th millions and millions and billions of years of travel, it essentially kind of uh, looks as if uh, this object or this light was traveling faster than the speed of light. Un unfortunately, this is an optical illusion, not an actual physical phenomenon, so and what I didn't mention is that a lot of the stuff that comes out of these jets, uh, so coming from the black hole up and down, a lot of the stuff moves at the speed that's very close to speed of light, it's about anywhere from 95% speed of light to about 99% speed of light. So it's probably the fastest sort of particle accelerator that we can find in the universe. Now, that's quasar, and this is what quasars look like. So basically, it's when it's under a bit of an angle, but not exactly straight on. Now, what happens if you look straight in the middle? And this actually is what we're really interested in right now. This is actually what the most interesting object, in my opinion, is. And this is, of course, called... And I'm going to rename this now. This is what you would call a blazar. So if you're st staring right in the middle and you get this absolutely ridiculously bright object, this right here is what blazars are. So essentially, it's just a different angle of looking at things. Um, so it's it's still the same object. It's still the uh, super active uh, galactic nuclei because of the black hole that's absorbing a lot of this light. And I'm actually going to accelerate time a little bit so you get to see what it looks like. And if you're staring right into the ray, you get blazar. There's not that many that we have found because having a, you know, a, a chance of a quasar aligning itself uh, so it stares directly at our planet is actually relatively low. And so there is not that many blazers that we found, but we did find something like a 
million of different quasars. Quasars are a lot more common because it's more likely that you'll be observing these active galactic nuclei at an angle, not exactly uh, staring right in the sort of eye of the uh, a black hole, but you're going to be more likely to observe them this way. And obviously the um, radio galaxies are also very common where you're basically just looking at them from the side. So here's a, the summary of everything here. This is essentially how they're classified today and what we know about them today. So they're not uh, particularly mysterious anymore. They used to be very mysterious objects. We actually could not really understand how they work and what they do. But today we are absolutely convinced that it's because of the supermassive black hole and the supermassive black hole creates these jets, particle jets that release energy really fast. And we actually even have pictures of them from Hubble telescope. Here's one, for example, where you can actually see the jets coming out of a black hole. And there's actually uh, some recent discoveries when it comes to quasars. We've actually discovered some really cool things about them. One of the things from, from last year, actually, from 2014 and 2015, is that we've discovered that a lot of them have such a varied um, luminosity. In other words, they change luminosities so fast that we realize that uh, they can change uh, from active nuclear galaxy to basically a quiet... Uh, or inactive galaxy within years, not even millions of years or thousands of years, but within our lifetime. So uh, one of the scientists that I'm going to be talking about in the weekend's video, because this is actually recent news, this, and her name is Stephanie Lamassa from NASA. Uh, and I'm going to be talking more about her during the weekend uh, news with What the Math, where we talk about space news. But basically, yes, she discovered that there is a quasar that she found that changed from being super, super bright to almost invisible uh, within 10 years and uh, now we found even more of these so we know that their luminosity their activity their actual sort of coolness their their um, black holes that absorb all this energy and release it can change uh, within years and it's a very sort of volatile volatile process that can uh, change this from a quasar to a normal galaxy within several year period and the other thing that's uh, very interesting that was found very recently as well is that our galaxy also emits these rays, but they're not as prominent. So actually all galaxies emit, emit these rays. Um, when a black hole in the center starts absorbing anything, it starts emitting these rays. And uh, we actually discovered that our galaxy has a very, very slight sort of emission of these, uh, these two rays. And so if there's a galaxy somewhere far away and possibly even a planet habitable, inhabited by some super smart species, and they're actually looking at our galaxy and they're seeing this they're probably also might even be wondering so what's going on in there and you know is there anyone in that particular galaxy that is alive and is intelligent and uh but one thing I didn't mention is that a lot of the quasars and blazers we're observing right now are ridiculously old. Remember, the light travels at speed of light, and the light we detect from the quasars and blazers that we see today is billions of years old. So in other words, what we are seeing is no longer there. They are probably just normal regular galaxies that don't even have this anymore. They probably just look like this, or maybe something completely different. They might even be a completely different shape by now. Uh, so the blazers and quasars are not really permanent objects. They come and go all the time and even our galaxy may one day become a blazer or a quasar or basically it will acquire a gal active galactic nuclear if a lot of stars come within the central area of the black hole or when Andromeda galaxy comes to visit uh, and uh, collides with our galaxy if a lot of stars approach the supermassive black hole that forms as a result of, um, of the merge of two galaxies, we might also get, uh, or we might also become uh, a blazar or a quasar. So yeah, a lot of these objects come and go, and as I mentioned before, we currently have a list of approximately a million of um, quasars and approximately 1,500 blazars. So in other words, there is approximately, specifically 1,580 objects as of uh, late 2015 that are staring exactly at us in this fashion. We can actually see them and they're super bright. They're so bright, in fact, that if you uh, if you watch my luminosity video and that where I compare different luminosities, their luminosity is minus 20. 26 to minus 27. So from a distance of 10 parsecs, they would be the brightest objects in our night sky and they would look somewhat close to the uh, luminosity of our sun actually. 
and their luminosity is actually usually higher than the total luminosity of all of the stars in the actual galaxy. So if you were to combine luminosity of all of these stars, and then if you were to look at the actual blazer in uh, sort of face on, this would be brighter than this which makes it a pretty interesting phenomenon. Anyway, so this was blazars and quasars, and this is how you can make one in Universe Sandbox 2 by essentially using pulsars to create these jets. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully now you know what to do if you want to play around with these really cool objects. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like this video, share it with your family, share it with your friends, share it with everybody you know, because blazars and quasars are no longer a mystery. Thank you, game you later, and... Bye-bye.